Hey everybody, it's been a while since I've done a, a video. Um, lots happened this year so far. Um, I've changed jobs. Um, I'm actually working for a, for a much larger company now. Um, I have also been quite busy with the project I'm on. Um, been quite a bit of a challenge. I've finally been able to get a next layer of my power supply done. So as you guys have seen in the past, we had the um, the bulk capacitance board. The bulk capacitance board um, blew up a couple of times with me getting the the design completely wrong. Um, I redesigned that, got a new board spun up with that. That worked well. In the process of um, creating the new board, I've also created a um, inrush current limiting board. That board I think worked well, and even though the new design doesn't really require it because it the um, diodes I'm using can manage a um, thousand amps um, in short bursts to sp and these diodes are specifically built to to do that so that they can withstand those um, the inrush current limit even though the diodes can deal with it I'm still going to keep the board because I just think it's good practice um, and then that allows me to do um, other stuff with the, with the rest of the module so on top of the inrush current limit board, which is a, a precursor or part of the um, bulk capacitance board, I've now gotten to the point where I have the um, this board. If you guys are following me on Twitter, you'll see that um, that I had this made by Oshpark. Um, awesome quality again. Oshpark's awesome. Um, these. So this is the next board you'll see. I've just mounted one of the uh, LT3080s on there. Um, and what I want to do with the video today is just to show you guys the the changes I've made to this circuit. Um, you've you've seen, I've, I've released a couple of videos and if you're watching this video and thinking you're gonna go back and follow along, be very careful. Um, I need to actually make notes on YouTube. Some of the videos that I've uploaded or the, some of the earlier designs that I went through the design um, steps were completely wrong. So if you're just blindly following along and you think you're, you're going to replicate exactly what I have, you're going to replicate exactly what I did, uh, including all the mistakes. So um, I will at some stage release this design when when I'm kind of happy that it's actually working and not, not um, you know, a piece of garbage. <laughs> um, and then you guys can can see that. In the meantime, I'm quite happy for you to to follow along on YouTube, post comments and that kind of thing. But I want to quickly today, just in in a in a discussion type way, go through the design, and I'll show you guys the, the changes I've implemented in, in this design, which I think is is probably better from the very early and original design. Um, one of which, for instance, is the I put a relay in here because we have linear regulators. I'll get back to that. I've got a um, 7812 on here for a 12 volt regulator. All that does will power the fan later on. Um, most of the rest of the design is, has been um, similarly the same. I also wanted to go through a little bit of the um, PC board layout stuff I've done. Um, okay, so let's get let's get into that. I'll take us over to the PC and I'll show you all of that. Okay, let's start with this. Um, let's start with this. <coughs> let's start with the bulk capacitance board. This board, you'll see, I've made a couple of changes. So first of all, I got completely the wrong um, transformer. I completely, in the original design, completely forgot about um, RMS. The RMS voltage is being quite a bit different, obviously. So I, I was planning to get a 30 volt out to the to the main um, power supply stage, and stupidly selected 18 to 18 volt um, toroidal transformer. I've now subsequently changed that, and I'm actually still need to go and purchase my my new toroidal transformer. With a new 12 volt transformer, the output would be about 17 volt times by by set two times 17 volt uh, with the RMS voltages added in. So this configuration I've also changed significantly. Um, this is a standard center tap configuration where um, the diodes will actually um, full wave regulate um, because we've got a center tap. Now you'll see that there's two pads 
um, happening there. And these are the, the guys that rush off to the um, current inrush current limiting board. If you decide not to use them, I could always just bridge these over and it'll, it'll all work, work fine. In the original design, because I noticed it late, I actually tried to put the inrush current limit on the input, which means it was AC um, limiting, which, which I think should have worked well. The only difference being most most people suggest that you do it on the on the um, on the DC side, which which is what I've moved it to now, and the rest is just simply caps um, as required. If you if you can obviously there, there's place for all these caps, and I've based that on 470 microfarad each, and worked out for the maximum current. This is what I need on the output. Uh, if you can get higher value caps you can obviously just replace them and leave out the ones that you don't need um, the board the board design is actually completely modular let's look at the board design so here's the board design um, let's just get those folds happening so you'll see that they're all parallel as you saw and the configuration is that our ground plane will be in the middle our 17 volt output will be in the bottom and our 34 volt output will be will be in the top um, there you can see it comes in um, through our regulators and that's our that's our dc phase there it comes out through that pad through our inrush current limit board back in and then into the bulk pistons board our inrush current limit board hasn't changed much um, you'll see that there it still takes, uh, oh, no, I still haven't updated those values, that should be 17 and 34 volt. You'll see that it simply comes in um, and sends all the, the current through a set of parallel resistors. That allows us this, this configuration at 470 ohm each times 10 resistors for each phase. Limits the overall current draw from the transformer to about 1.5 amps. Now, one and a half amp is obviously way better than those diodes can deal with um, at, a, at a thousand amp um, spikes, but I've left it in anyway. So once the capacitors, the bulk capacitance board is is all charged up, which should happen about a one and a half seconds after you've initially power on, the relay will kick in and effectively short circuit, short these um, resistors out, take them out of circuit and you'll have the full 3 amp available from the transformer to the rest of the circuit. The board interconnect we have here is simply the same interconnect that runs through all the phase, the, the different layers of the board. And the only one that is actually used in this instance is the power good line, which sends out the 5 volt to close the relay um, one and a half seconds after the, the board is, is booted up. The board layout is relatively simple. As you see, this is there's no um, oh, a little bit full. So effectively, I just try to go with big fat traces, um, give the relay as much of the the um, you know enough thick enough traces to to be able to deal with it with the three amp currents. Um, these two lines over here are simply just board to board um, pin to pin um, jumper wires that I'm going to put in there. The only reason for that is because I try to keep this double-sided, but both sides are, are um, in mostly the same with the idea that I can just um, get more current flowing through and I didn't want to break that trace just to get these two control lines flowing through. So I'll just use jumper wires for those. So input through through the resistor to, to the output until it, um, this relay closes off, shorts it out, in which case there's the shortest path and it goes straight from in to out and you get the full current available. And then on to the, the main topic of discussion. Um, this is the, the board that now sits. So we've got bulk power coming in, nice regulated clean DC, hopefully, coming, 
oh, sorry, this side, coming in through these three pins. And the idea being, so what, what I've added, you'll see in this board, is a relay. So this is a um, dual stable relay, so um, you don't need to have power to it to keep it latched. It's a latching relay, sorry, that's the better word. And um, what this will allow us to do, if you look at, oops, let me get that nicely in view. Um, yeah, if you, if you have a look at this, it'll effectively shunt the low voltage, so the 17 volt input rail, um, through to the, where is it? Uh, yeah, so okay, it says 15 volt, but the 17 volt input rail, it'll shunt through to the main power board. And now obviously the reason for that is because we have these linear regulators, the more power you give this thing to dissipate in order for you to regulate the output, the hotter they get, right? So the idea being that when you are operating, say below about 12, 12, maybe 13 volt, you will actually be drawing power from the low voltage input. So this, the LT3080s would only have to sh drop the voltage from about 17 volt to your working voltage, as opposed to taking the full 34 volt and trying to regulate that down to say 3.3 volt or, or um, 5 volt or whatever you want to want to use it for, right? So that just makes it a little more efficient, um, so that we don't get too much power having to be dissipated through these. The heatsink I want to use for this should be more than capable of dealing with with all of that power anyway. So it shouldn't be too much of a problem, but I wanted to get you know a slightly more efficient design especially given that I'm using linear regulators all over the place. Um, as I mentioned earlier, there's a 12 volt regulator. It doesn't really function anything. There's no output specifically to it. All I'm doing with a 12 volt regulator is sending it straight up the board to board connector because that'll be dealing, that'll power the fan that'll do the dynamic cooling. So um, I just wanted a 12 volt output for that. Now let's look at these these regulator phases, right? So I haven't changed much in this design. What I have added is an alert LED. We have this alert function. So with the extra relays and the bulk capacitance boards, I didn't want to go and expand our interboard connection too much because most of the, um, so things like these alert pins on the INA226, I was originally feeding through to, to the microcontroller, but I'd be able to monitor whether we are over power, over current, or over voltage, um, or if anything goes wrong via the sense lines and that kind of thing anyway. So, but I, what I did, what did opt for is to put an LED on each of those pins, which, which would, should help with um, debugging quite a bit. And I've done that for the five volt and the 3.3 volt rail as well, all the other way around. So if these, um, if these chips do do find any any issues, the LED will come on and you'll be able to see that. In worst case scenario, I can probably pipe that through to the front panel if I needed to. Um, other additions I've also made. So here's our, our voltage, um, which, what is it? current set and voltage set um, input here, our digital to analog converters. What I've, what I've configured here is for testing purposes when I'm initially assembling this thing, I want to be able to put a pot onto these. So let's say um, a, a 10 turn pot and I can skip the whole digital to analog um, conversion here. I will maybe even not populate those, those chips initially until I've tested all of this, this configuration just to save me having to desolder them or, or you know waste those parts if, if something does go wrong in this. So I've added a, a nice three pin connector on the on the board, which I'll show you in a bit for both of those. And you can just assign parts to these. Don't populate that guy and send through. So the I set pin and the V set pin will then simply feed through the analog voltage as I set it with a pot um, based on our three volt reference voltage. Um, and on this pin, I will get between zero and three volt and via all the um, multiplication and stuff I should get on this pin the zero to 30 volt but obviously low current which will then regulate the main current flow and the voltage set um, through the through the main board so nothing there has really changed 
we've still got the 10 parallel um, resistors making up a shunt resistor that's obviously something the reason I do that is for the power dissipation I'm actually using in this instance um, 0 0.125 watt resistors each and all together they can deal with something like I think I worked it out at some stage to be about 30 watt or maybe that sounds a bit high but much much higher than the the wattage I would need if I'm pushing um, the full full current full voltage through this the circuit those little resistors are, are more than capable and I'm using 1% resistors which which should come out with a fairly um, stable and an accurate shunt resistor which I'm basing my um, voltage regulation and stuff off so again the, there's two paths of regulation in the circuit I've done the analog regulation right which is using op amps via the set circuit the the other option uh, is also that I'm using these INA 226s to monitor the shunt directly and now this chip can do monitor the shunts with um, for voltage and current um, and there are I squared C interfaces which means I'll, I'll be able to read what, it, what is being drawn through the shunt resistor at any time it also has an output sense line to, to be to be sure with it for the voltage so that's your voltage sense line and a current sense line I've got both of them connected up and you'll see there's three of these right there's three there's one for the main regulator and then I've also just added them for the um, 5 volt and the 3.3 volt I keep switching those so the 5 volt and the 3.3 lines just so it's interesting to monitor how much current you are drawing through those those um, output pods as well um, and again so th another reason I did this is because this could be a fallback for our analog if anything goes wrong there this guy could stall by the microcontroller draw <coughs> If I ever my microcontroller does lock up for some reason and something goes wrong, it will actually um, take over from the analog, and um, I could then via the I squared T interfaces, sorry, via the um, it, so they will still current limit at least, right, as your to what you you've set the voltage to. Um, here's our current source, the LM three three four three volt, um, or sorry, ten. 100 milliamp, 10 milliamp, I can't remember what that was. Um, current source, which is the minimum current that you have to draw from the LT3080 is to get them to regulate the voltage right down to the zero volt line. Um, now, very similar to, to these, so you'll see here's our 5 volt line, that's the output that I'm going to use to send, it off, send off to the front USB port which is purely going to be a charge port, there's no data usage in that um, there is going to be a rear USB port which will be your data line out where you can connect it to your PC and do the logging and, and all of that but the front USB port is purely for a, a charge port for, for convenience sake um, then there's a 3.3 volt output which I'll also shunt out to the front it is also being used by some of the, the microcontroller circuitry in, in the other board and you'll see both that both of these boards um, or all of this functionality also puts out a lot of stuff onto the board interconnect so this is our layered um, system design where I'm putting the I squared C line through there our 3 volt voltage reference the, the sense line so over here is our, our voltage sense port so that we can sense the actual voltage being delivered on the output port as opposed to relying on what we set it to right so you know, I might put some some kind of. We the short version is I need to need to still work on the software for this, but that will allow us to get the actual voltage up through the microcontroller, and I can then use that appropriately. These are V set and our um, V in, oh so V in set and V in reset are the guys that control our our um, power relay over here. So that will default over to the to the lower voltage setting and then as required flip over to the higher voltage input line um, yes and sorry and then AV sense is our sense line which we spoke about earlier um, there's our 5 volt and our 3.3 line 3.3 volt line going up to our microcontroller board um, our current limit um, 
catcher, you'll see there that um, as soon as you go into current limiting mode, I'll, I'll pull this line down, which will allow the microcontroller to just sense that from the analog circuitry as well. Um, and ideally, what I'm trying to do is not just doing current limiting, but um, constant current. Uh, this is another one of those aspects where I'm not quite sure how that would work yet. I'm hoping in software, if I if I can set it to just below the actual current limiting level that's been selected, um, and I'll, you can calibrate that out nicely, I'd be able to do current um, constant current on this power supply as well. But I still need to get get the final um, research and stuff done on that. So let's look at the the board quickly. So here's our, here's our PC board. Um, so something I, I did want to quickly just show you guys what I did is you'll see here that I've got, here's my input line, right? So if we look at coming from the shunt, um, from, our, from our input voltage, our high voltage and our low voltage input lines, this is obviously ground, um, they both go into our relay the relay will then select whether I'm taking the high input or the low input to our, our main input line. It goes through the shunt resistors, through our op amp circuitry, um, and off to the LT3080s. Three of them parallel to get the 3 amp um, output current that I, that I want to design for. But what I've done here is you'll see this little snaking circuit happening here. You see this little snaking circuit over here, and you'll see, I might be able to highlight that. And you'll see what, that, what that'll do for us. What I've tried to do here is to make the lines coming into our, our three discrete LT3080s roughly the same length, right? And this is the idea with this is to, to manage um, the power dissipation or how much each one heats up differently to, to its neighbor. And I'm hoping that this should give each of these three about a, a um, the same level of a chance to, to get this, the power regulation shared between them as opposed to one of them eating up more than the other. They are thermally connected to a single um, to a single heat sink on the back, which, uh, as I said, is, a, is quite a large heat sink and will be more than capable of, of dissipating the heat required. I've also got our, our 5 volt and our 3.3 volt circuits um, happening here. I did originally spec in um, switch mode regulators in here, but for for what you get, I'm not yet convinced that the standard um, TO220 pin pin switch, you know, pin to pin um, compatible devices offer enough benefit to warrant them. Um, you know, these guys can do, the, the switch mode regulators can do 1.5 amp, um, some of them, but then you get linear regulators that can do the same, right? So, apart from the heat and the inefficiency, I'm going to initially use stock standard 7805 and 7833 um, linear regs here, but I might switch them out in later designs if I notice that they do contribute to the heat build up too much. Um, depending on how much power we draw through them and that kind of thing. Here's our, our 12 volt regulator. I've done some via, stitch, via stitching through to the bottom board and there's quite a bit of copper around here. It's not going to be drawing a lot of power. So the idea simply being that, um, you know, just to give it some heat dissipation, it's a standard DPEC. Yeah, this is the, our, our two 10 um, turn pot analog inputs that I was, was referring to earlier. These when once we go over to the full digital control, I'm hoping that these should also provide nice little um, test pads. Um, so they will, in a in a in a final version, hopefully the shipping version, these will not be populated. So this is effectively debug ports, but they will allow us to have some um, some nice test ports or test pads to work within. We should have a a solid three volt coming in here, so we'll have a nice place to measure our reference voltage. Um, ground and then this is whatever this will also be whatever is set by our two ATD converters so we're able to sense nicely what those two are set 
why aren't using a, a, um, a standard um, multimeter or, or something similar. One last thing I did want to quickly just show you guys is I've I obviously had a, a bit of a, a blunder. Well, one of one of many or another one of many, where um, I've I've mounted this LT3080, and I had to design the I designed my own part in 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 Eagle, and what I forgot to do is to get the hole sizes for the LT3080s correct. Right, so in the data sheet, the spec says you need the 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 pins could be anything between 0 0.7 and um, 0 0.92 millimeters in size. I just went with the default 0 0.8 millimeters. And it was quite a mission to get this guy in, right? I mean, I was quite a bit of force. You can see the pins aren't quite nice anymore. But I got it in. And I think for this initial version, um, just to test with, that should be more than, more than enough. I will do the same for for another one potentially next to it. And um, however, I have updated the footprint on the on the board design so that when I spin more boards later on, these should just slip in as as they should have. Um, and yeah, so Oshpark, awesome, um, awesome PCB company. I do need to do some work on my logo, as you can see the I went in under the G because they seem to use a different font than the default font that I'm using in my in my CAD software. So you'll see all the all the text the text sorry for the screen layer or the, the light layer. Um, all the text seems to be not quite lined up the way I had it in, in my design package. But what I'm thinking of is actually just making the entire logo an image and then overlaying that as opposed to trying to just make the the g part the logo and then um you know trying to text fill the rest next to it um there's a little board i haven't soldered or trimmed those pins yet but that's just a quick look at the back there you can see the the serpentine trace in the back where i tried to do a bit of impedance matching on the on the pc board lines there so that was just a quick update as i said apologies for not doing a, a video for a long time um being a bit busy no real excuse I always um, so the excuses are just that um, you should stop making them um, so that I hope you guys enjoyed the the bit of an update um, if you have any comments of glaring faults or mistakes that you see that I've made with this new board again please um, YouTube comments welcome um, thoughts ideas suggestions um, I've done a couple of other things um, in the time that um, I've not shot some videos. I've made a, I've replicated the um, King of Randoms, um, I forget his name now, his little aluminium forge. I've made a, um, I've melted my first bit of aluminium into an actual ingot. Um, not a super successful um, attempt. Um, so I've done that. I might shoot, post some video, well not videos, um, photos of that on, on Twitter. Um, cool, cool. Um, he, he makes a couple of good videos as well. Um, overall, I think this video has probably run long enough. Uh, you guys are probably bored at your calls by now looking at, at circuit designs. Um, I am looking at for the top layer board, so the, the microcontroller board. I was originally targeting a uh, Arduino Nano. Um, Simply because that's that's one of my favorite favorite boards, but they have now discontinued that. They have come out with the Micro Pro, which actually uh, has many many more um, IO, I, GPIOs available. Um, and I'm thinking of swapping over to that um, that layout, so that um, it allows to you know it, it effectively because of the ad additional GPIOs, I would not need to have an IO expander. As I've, as I've so far designed into this circuit. Um, however, the, the mounting pins and that kind of thing might not line up. Um, but I might decide that that's an acceptable risk. I need to see, still see how all of that fits in. But effectively, the reason I've kept the microcontroller board um, a stock standard Arduino is in the spirit of this design being completely modular. If you want to design, or if I want to later design a standardized or different my own custom microcontroller to to control the entire power supply I can do that 
all I need to do is then come out to the same pin configuration, which um, which could be as simple as running ribbon cables across or you know creating a custom board with whatever processor or, or thing on top um, as long as the IO pins required for the power supply match you're all good right so I mean if you really really wanted to you can control this thing from a Raspberry Pi um, a Latte Panda any of those single board computers or any other microcontroller you can put a PIC controller on there um, so I uh, specifically try to keep it separate to to make it modular and changeable as as you as I, as we want to in the future. So the idea being that this power supply will eventually release as a sort of a um, <clears throat> an educational kit, um, and maybe hopefully someone else finds all the learnings and all the little um, burning diodes and things that I go through um, useful, and hopefully someone learns learns something for all the mistakes that I've made to date, and I know there's been many. Um, so if you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. Um, leave comments. I'd love to hear from you guys. Um, otherwise, until next time, cheers.